They are. So we have the on. next best thing as we bring you into our Wild Mondays with the Academy You're of okay. Wildlife Education. Take it away, Lou. Oh, yeah, we're okay. We have a very frightened uh, snow, a snowshoe. Snowshoe hare. Okay, Absolutely. snowshoe hare. You think it's a little Easter bunny, but he's very frightened right now, so we're just letting him uh, stick his head in my coat here. Just so we can uh, keep the the uh, the deal off of his, his uh, eyes, he keep the light out of his eyes. But it's in time for Easter, of course. Oh, it's uh, in time for Easter, and uh, again, this isn't a, a rabbit like most people would think. He's actually a snowshoe hare, and there's a difference between hares and rabbits. But it's all part of what we do this month. Uh, it's Earth Day's coming up. This is Earth Month, and uh, obviously we're talking about to reduce, reuse, and recycle, and everything we do impacts the environment, and that also pertains to snowshoe hares. Now We're, what is the difference between a, a hare and a rat? Uh, snowshoe hares basically have got longer feet, taller ears, no longer legs. Uh, their offspring uh, are born fully furred and they can see oh, so know, they man. can actually uh, leave the mother fairly early whereas your uh, rabbits when they're born they're hairless and blind and it takes kinda a while. Kind of like mice are. Kind of like mice so okay. uh, again uh, there are some differences and this guy here at uh, one time uh, was uh, native to Iowa, so uh, you would live in the pine forest and stuff, and he's not around anymore, and thus, uh, you know, it's a native species that is now gone, now, and it's due to what we've done. Now, if it looks like I'm hanging on to him uh, rather tightly, I have a firm hold on him right now. I got my my, fit, my forefinger around the front of his, uh, the top of his leg, and my second finger behind his leg, and right. then my three fingers around his chest. I'm not squeezing his chest, but I can feel his heartbeat, <laughs> and it was going 100 miles an hour. No, sure. 200 yeah. miles an hour when we first got here. Now it's slowing down right. quite a bit, and it's starting to beat at a more of a normal rate right now. He's starting sure. to calm down a little bit. Uh. But we had a whole bunch of, of these type of animals. We had rabbits, not necessarily hares growing up, so we right. had to deal with scared ones all the time. So I think he's getting oh, a little yeah. more comfortable now, so he's, uh, he's okay. Right, and again, that's just typical for uh, this species. They're high energy. Uh, this guy here, uh, he can jump. 10 feet run over 20 miles an hour mm. when they're ready to go full in, out. In an instant, too. Oh, they're very quick and, and agile. Uh, again, uh, they're very adaptable for the environment that they're living in, and they're designed to be in places where there's snow. That's why they've got those big back feet. And again, another thing that makes them different than our, our cottontail rabbits. Okay, I'm going to see if I can show his big back feet. Don't be frightened. Okay, th there you go. There's his, there's, look how long that foot is. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you go, Craig. And he's transitioning from uh, white to dark in the winter time. Uh, these rabbits are pure white. They blend into their background. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, that's how nature allows animals to adapt to, to their ecosystem. So mm -hmm. in another oh, couple of weeks or so, he'll be pretty much all brown. And then again this fall, he'll start turning white. And by Christmas, he'll be snow white rabbit. Mm -hmm. So okay. yeah, snow white hair. So now people that are planting things now, it's OK, just chill out. Yeah, yeah uh, he's good. Um, now, people that are planting things, uh, how do you, is there any way to keep these kind of animals out? Well, again, you're not going to have to deal with the hares, but the rabbits are going to come back in. Uh, it's like I always tell people, if you plant a garden, you're basically feeding the rabbits, and then the bobcats will eat the rabbits and stuff. So you They'll stop gonna, your garden from disappearing. It's nice to have a few... Uh, um, bobcats in the neighborhood to, to help uh, cut down on the uh, rabbit population. Uh, with these guys it was Canadian lynx and that's what we're finding up in Wisconsin as the lynx starts to uh, return to some parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin it's because there's an abundance of uh, snowshoe yeah. hare. So when we go out tracking for uh, uh, wildlife in Wisconsin one of the things they want us to look for are snowshoe hare tracks because that would also help with uh, the Canadian lynx moving throughout uh, those two states that uh, we help with. So it's an important species. Uh, not to say that we, uh, I doubt if we'd ever have a resident population of snowshoe hares again, but we have might they been get to, they, they try to reestablish them or not? Well, it's one of those things we can't support the food web uh, okay. for this particular species. Uh, they're one of the few animals that can digest uh, greens as far as evergreens and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Pine needles is what they can digest and if you don't have pine needles then they don't have a food source for the winter months. So that's their stuff. primary food source in the winter? In the winter months, right. They'll gnaw on uh, pine bark and pine needles stuff like that and so it's one of those things that yeah it's a native species it's supposed to be in Iowa 
but if we can't support the food web for this particular species, uh, it's not going to work. So yeah, you can take 150 rabbits and rabbits reproduce really well. Hares are no different. They will have uh, three to four uh, different litters a year, but if there's no food for these animals to eat, then it's not going to work. It's just like trying to bring the Canadian lynx back. Uh, you could put 100 lynx out there. There's no snowshoe hares for them to eat. They're going to die because they are designed to eat a particular part, and that's how nature keeps the ecosystems balanced is by having these different species in these different habitats. So the snowshoe hare played an important part, and it does play an important part in the food web uh, for different parts of uh, different types of habitat. Okay, and for the record, uh, for the record, rabbits and hares don't lay eggs. They bring <laughs> them on Easter Sunday. They don't lay the eggs, okay? Yeah, and this guy uh, could deliver them much quicker than any Easter bunny could. There so you go. So again, if we had, it'd make more sense to have a, an Easter hare than any that's an Easter rabbit, because these guys could get around the world a lot quicker. All right, so what else is going on over at your place? Oh, uh, we're just getting ready for some uh, new displays uh, opening up. Uh, the touch turtle tank is getting closer to being done, so we, hopefully it'll, uh, as we get closer to when school's out, We'll have a brand new attraction for moms and kids to come out and uh, interact with uh, those particular species. Uh, we're doing some new programs. So we're putting those together for the summer months. Uh, we're getting ready to go out and do uh, the county fairs. The Iowa State Fair is going to be really big for us this year. Uh, so pretty do you cool know things. where you're going to be located yet or not? At the State Fair. In uh, Under yeah. the grandstands in the very industries, 4-H building? We've been at the State Fair for five years, and we've been in uh, the Maytag building. Oh, sure, okay, yeah. Right, it was the family theaters. Well, we've been transitioning that over the past few, few years to the Pella Wildlife Adventure Theater, and now the Academy of Wildlife Education Theater. Wow. Both theaters seat 300 people. We've had standing room only. Now, where's programs. that in conjunction to, the, uh, like, a landmark over at the fair? That people DNR would. building. DN okay, sure. Right next door to the okay. DNR. So we've had uh, huge turnouts. We've had bears, wolves, cougars out there. We've done reptile, insect shows. Uh, we have to come out there with you. Oh, we're going to be making some big announcements okay. here really soon. Okay. So uh, just uh, we're going to have an exciting summer of activities for everybody. We have our Earth Day celebration, which is uh, April 26th, I believe, which is not this Saturday, but next Saturday. Right. <laughs> and uh, you'll have a chance to come out okay. and uh, get involved in some okay, uh, good environmental projects Okay, there. dude, we'll let you go back in your cage here That's a little right. bit. There you all right, well, there you have it. Well, the snowshoe hare wants to go back and go take a nap, I believe. Snowshoe hare is so ready to go. Tell everybody where your place is located. Okay, everybody come out to the Academy of Wildlife Education. It's at Merle Hay Mall. Mm -hmm. uh, we're open during regular mall hours. Wonderful. All right, All we'll right. see you back. We'll be right back. You're watching Great Day.